This year, unlike any other year I've ever known, I've been repeatedly reminded about how essential art is. Not just the work we see in galleries and museums, but the art that engages us across communities. I think about lots of different projects that I've seen or read about this year. For example, when anonymous artists work together with the mayor's office in Washington, DC to transform a stretch of street with the words Black Lives Matter, they demonstrated how powerfully art can change our understanding of a place, a movement, and our connection within a community. As Kyle Cheka of The New Yorker wrote about the intervention in DC, such artworks generate visual force fields that make us more aware of our bodies in space. The mural reminds us that by marching these recent weeks, we are using our physical presence in public to communicate. An action that's even more potent given the long isolation of quarantine and the lack of access to art caused by the shuttering of museums. Other artists drawn together by crises created collectives to sew and distribute face masks when PPE were hard to come by. No less forceful were artists who brought song to people in isolation, hiring themselves out to perform singing telegrams, a seemingly outdated form of communication and shared over Zoom. Throughout this year, art helped us find our footing. Resilience is the word that comes to mind as well. There were our faculty who figured out how in this new world to continue to deliver their curriculum in person or redesign their approach to teach remotely. There were our staff who supported students and faculty so that they could continue to work. And there were our students who kept coming to class. So I congratulate all of our graduates who persevered this year to make and study art and through their hard work understood how essential art is to our sense of humanity. Thank you. Hello, everyone. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Michelle Leach, and I'm receiving a bachelor's in art history today, or in a week from now when you see this video. When I was asked to give a speech about what it was like to be an art and art history student at CU Boulder, graduating in 2021, I was extremely honored. I've loved my time as an art history student, and I'm grateful for all of the extraordinary students and faculty I've met along the way. But this speech felt a little impossible. I haven't been in the art and art history building in 14 months. What am I supposed to know about being a student? We've spent the last year taking classes online, seeing people as names and occasionally faces on a computer screen. It's been difficult to feel connected to professors, peers in the department at times. Because of this lack of connection, I felt completely unqualified to give a speech that summarizes our experiences in this program. But I recognize that this is probably a shared feeling. So here I am anyways, giving a speech to my kitchen, attempting to reconnect with all of you and knowing that there's no way I could really capture these final semesters. When classes shifted online, I moved home and due to some weird COVID displacement, I ended up living with my parents, my older sister and her three kids. I traded my quiet apartment for a house where three small children and one really big kid, me, we're all trying to take online classes. I was going between doing my classwork to helping my youngest niece learn how to read time on an analog clock. At one point, I had to buckle down and take a timed online midterm. Beforehand, I asked my mom if she could keep everyone quiet or at least semi-quiet for just an hour. Through the whole exam, the only thing I heard was my mom loudly talking in the kitchen. I have great memories of that time with my family, but it was a big shift. I'd gone from studying all the time to doing the bare minimum that I had to to watch a Marvel movie every night with my nieces and nephews. Movies were a great distraction until the kids went to bed and my mom and I would watch the news. This put everything into perspective and was a reminder of the emotional strain we were all going through. After I struggled with the end of that semester, I was so afraid of what my last year of my degree would look like, but it got better. And it's not all bad. I kind of loved waking up 10 minutes before class started and not changing out of my PJs most of the time. We were forced to make new routines. And at this point, it almost feels normal. But one of the few things that can get me out of my pajamas is a museum. So naturally, when I got the chance to see an art piece I've been battling with since I started studying art history, I faced my fears and I got on a plane to New York. This was meant to be a trip to visit a grad school, but it was really just a thinly veiled excuse for me to visit the Met and the MoMA. This is how I found myself in the MoMA, standing in front of Marette Oppenheim's object, the fur teacup or breakfast in fur, whatever you want to call this ridiculous sculpture, I was excited to see it. When I took my first art history class, I absolutely 
hated the fur teacup. It's literally a teacup, saucer, and spoon covered in animal fur. I did not understand it, and I was not convinced it was art. It represented the thing I resented the most about modern art. It felt pointless and made me very uncomfortable. But last semester, I took my capstone course with Professor Aladeff in Surrealism. I found myself writing my final paper on Marat Oppenheim and her works involving gender. The fur teacup went from being completely nonsensical to representing the story of a woman making a name for herself in a period dominated by male artists. It created an avenue for me to appreciate a whole genre of art that I had previously overlooked. That paper turned out to be one of my favorite things I've ever written. I hope that each of you have had your own fur teacup moment in this department, something that's pushed you forward and made you rethink what you'd believed before. Whether that's a period, artist, artwork, or medium, I hope that you have come to love or appreciate something new as an artist or art historian during your time here. I studied Oppenheim for a good portion of last, sem last semester. I looked at countless images of her work and read more opinions about the fur teacup than I can count, but seeing it in person was entirely different. Museums fear that by putting their collections online, people will forego their institutions altogether, but there's something that feels so important to me to seeing the art that I've studied for so long in person. I cannot help but kind of feel like a kid in a candy store, telling whoever I'm traveling with the interesting facts that I've learned about a piece or an artist. My boyfriend's experience seeing Van Gogh's paintings probably would have been perfectly peaceful without my barrage of facts I learned in Professor Aladev's course. Beyond my own experience, I saw a renewed excitement in the visitors of the Met in the MoMA. I'm not sure if people realized that they'd missed museums over this last year. I definitely thought about it, but then again, my life revolves around art. We've all spent time watching everything on Netflix, taking all of the BuzzFeed quizzes or doing some virtual museum tours if you're a huge nerd like me, but they're all disconnected and these individualized experiences just don't quite feel the same. I don't think that I'm alone when I say that I'm excited and can't wait to get back to in-person interactions with art. To me, it feels like the perfect way to reconnect and re-engage with the world outside of my small apartment. This semester, I was an intern at Boulder Museum of Contemporary Art, where once again, the only thing getting me out of my PJs was a museum. I helped install the, the spring exhibit titled From This Day Forward, which is an extraordinary collection of eight artists. Each artist responded so transparently to the world around them. They commented on the problems of today and the experiences of the last year. They each took hardship and turned it into powerful pieces of art. The main goal was to make people contemplate where we wanted to go and often how we could get there together. As art historians, we were taught to consider the world in which a piece is made and how that affects the art. This is what makes art so hu uniquely human and relatable. As creators, you have the responsibility of filtering the world into your art. And this is something I will always admire. It will be the job of artists to guide the reconnection re and reflection after this bizarre and uncomfortable time. This world will always have problems, things to stand up for, advocate for, and be passionate about. And I can say with complete certainty that this department does not have a lack of passion. You all wouldn't be here otherwise. This last year has been tough for artists and museums, but there's a light at the end of the tunnel. I'm not saying it will be easy, but what better time is there to go out into the world as a creator? Everyone is excited to reconnect with art and humanity. And I hope that both artists and art historians can play a role in that. Our problems in society will persist and we will keep fighting for them, but in some way it feels like a bit of a new world we're graduating into. A world where people are excited to reconnect. If you had asked me six months ago what graduating would feel like, I probably would have said scary. But today, instead, I'm hopeful. Of course, this isn't how any of us imagined our college graduation. I struggled with the idea of watching commencement on a TV or computer screen where it feels strangely like it could be any other day. Although today I'm not in my pajamas and in that way it's a little special. It does feel a bit anticlimactic though, but do not let that diminish your accomplishments. We did it and no one will ever say that the class of 2021 had it easy. Even though we can't be together today, I hope that each of you finds a little bit of joy and celebration in any way that you can. I'm excited to see what you all do out there. Go out, create, and make people listen. I hope our paths cross again in the future. Congratulations and thank you.
All right, everyone, let's settle down. Let's go ahead and get started. I know you're excited because you're graduating. Um, so uh, let's get this done with our very last exercise. Um, so let's, uh, let's sit down, settle into our space. Um, and we're going to try to sink into summertime. So, oh, maybe do that. Ooh, that feels good. Yep, sink into summertime. One last thing we're gonna do together. Uh, sometimes it helps if I put on my summer hat. Uh, big glasses help me sink into summertime too. I find my work shirt on, maybe I, um, oh, there's my beach shirt. Look at that, my summer shirt. This, and then uh, this is, this song came out in 1991, right before my senior year of high school by DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince um, called Summertime. Let me play it for you. Congratulations. Uh, I'm so glad we met. Um, keep in touch. Have an amazing summer, the best summer ever. Of all that hardcore dance that has gotten to be a little bit out of control. It's cool to dance, but what about it? Congratulations. Wow. You did it. Congratulations. It's been a challenging year, but you've made it. You should be proud. Congratulations, mucha suerte, and celebrate with some delicious empanadas. Congratulations, class of 2021, for all your hard work, your dedication, and your many successes, and best of luck in the future. on your graduation, wishing you the best in your next adventure, and most of all, wishing you happiness in whatever you do. It's Jean Goldstein, front desk gal here, saying congratulations for all your hard work. It's been a really tough year, we know that. We're all very, very proud of you. Way to go.
Congratulations, Art and Art History Class of 2021. You give us all something so worthwhile to celebrate when we need it the most. I hope you all take some time to enjoy this big milestone with your loved ones. Such an accomplishment. Cheers to you. Hey, Class of 21, it's been a long year and you people were outstanding. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations to everyone for graduating under the most difficult of situations. As Riley, my cat says, way to hang in there. Have a great summer and please do keep in touch with us. Congratulations, everyone. It's been a very challenging year, but you've made it. I wish you all the very best for the future. Congratulations. <laughs>